Okay. Uh, another question uh, that uh, maybe it's about how did you attain all these opportunities like uh, scholarships and and everything that you have done after Fulbright? Because it is really hard to get scholarship. You need to take some some kind of test, which is really expensive. And well, I understand that education is, is yeah. expensive. And if you want to win something great, you have to take risk. But it is kind of hard that, uh, to pass those kind of exams. How was the preparation? Yeah, so when I was coming to America for me, as you know, I came under the Fulbright program. It is one year program, mm -hmm. almost to be exactly 10 months. And the, oh. so I had everything planned in my head and written down on piece of, on the, I had a notebook that in order for me to stay in America, I have to continue to get it through education. So in order to get education, obviously the TOEFL exam was already paid by the US Embassy, I paid for them, then that one. Then I know I have to do the GRE. And then I have to apply for universities. And in order to apply for your universities, each university will cost a certain amount of money for application fee. But in America, the TOEFL exam, the results, if you apply to a university, you don't send you a copy. The copy is sent by the ETS, the owners of the test. And then, at the same time, oh, I don't know, is yeah, I don't know, is something background noise okay? So, at the same time, uh, on my end, uh, I knew uh, I have to pay extra money $17 for every copy of the TOEFL exam to be sent to the universities, and um, then for GRE. You have to send, you have to pay $27 extra for each copy to be sent. Mm. And I knew in order to do that, I have to apply to Benin universities. So for me, I didn't save the money so that I can go back to Tanzania and have an apartment. I used all my money I was mm. saving to apply for the universities. So I applied to 25 universities. Mm. And that's why that's how I managed to uh, to get the uh, to get my to get a scholarship. That's number one. Uh, so in the end, even if I applied twenty five, I got three full scholarships: one in Europe, two in the US. So I moved from West Virginia to California to do my masters. So when I was when I went to do my masters. Uh, Already now is the game is changing. Uh, what is the next step? For me, I came here. I say oh, you taking me from here. You put me in the grave. You are not taking me here. You are taking back me to go and live back to Tanzania. My plan was I'm coming here. God said, go to the world, multiply, conquer the world, fulfill the world. But God didn't say go to Kigoma in Tanzania. <laughs> that means as wow. long as I'm legal, I can stay any place. Mm. Yeah, so for that particular case, so while I was doing my master's, I met my wife. At that time, then we dated, we got married. So I got married uh, while I was still a master's student, while I was yeah. about to graduate. That's where I got married. So obviously after getting married, for me it was a little bit different at that time, because there was a very big challenge uh, into the job market uh, because it was the peak of financial crisis back in 2009, 2010, around that time. So you graduate, you don't get jobs. I was applying 100 to 300 jobs per day. Wow. Like, you apply until they block your email. Yahoo usually, I didn't know that they block the email. They know it is a scam because you have sent so many emails in one day. I didn't know there is that limit. So I had to create different yeah. emails to apply. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. I, I came to know by applying. So that was another way on how I was able to do that. And life in California was very expensive. One bedroom, we're talking about 1,500 
or 1,300 maybe. That's one bedroom apartment in California. Wow. And then at that time, remember, I have a wife and she's pregnant. Wow. <laughs> See, another That's complication tough. comes there. Then we talk about the culture. My in-laws said, mm -hmm. can you come and stay in our house for free while you are still looking to get settled? Which is in a normal, reasonable way, that is a good thing. Then you come as African. How can an African man go and live with in-laws? Like, your ego comes there, your African culture comes here. Another complication. You as a weak person. Yes. But in the end, do you, are you, I mean, the life is kicking you. Are you going to be homeless? You have to accept the, the help. Um, <laughs> so you have to get the help. I have to go to stay with my in-laws. So I was applying for so many jobs. I have to find everything so I thought I can get out there. So mm -hmm. for me, the game change happened when I made a decision to join the Navy. I have to join the military mm -hmm. because I applied so many jobs and it was difficult to get. So and I started learning what are the benefits of joining the military. Like, okay, if you join the military, you can be able to become a US citizen right away. You can be able to uh, get any job after that, whatever quick. You'll be able to get a VA home loan. You have to do everything. So I had to lose weight, but I do everything they want. I managed to succeed, and that is when I was able to join. So from that decision, all those things I went through, it helped me to do anything from there quicker. And whatever I want to do, as long as I know the steps and the, I know the resources, I can go and struggle and fight whatever it is until I was able to attain it. Yeah, uh, that, that is a very good thing. And uh, actually, I'm learning because most of people and youth in Africa, we, we think that life in America is really easy. Opportunities are there just waiting for you. Life is good. There are a lot of leisure, the thing which is totally different. Because when you come here, hey, 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 you have to work hard. <laughs> you really have to work hard. There is nothing easy. And there are no shortcuts because everything is on the, like, on the line. There are rules that guide people. Exactly. You see, and it's totally different, totally different. Just like even now, let's say, now we say, okay, I'm already relaxed in my life. I work as a full time. Mm -hmm. Director of Africa, one organization. I mm -hmm. do YouTube. By doing YouTube, mm -hmm. it means I'm mm -hmm. making almost mm -hmm. 50 videos per month. Mm -hmm. wow. Which is a lot of videos, at least two videos per day. Yeah. Wow. Then, I'm mm -hmm. writing books. Then, I have three kids. Okay. I have a wife. That's a lot. And then you need to have yourself like, okay, let me go and even a walk or do something, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you must do all these kind of things within the short mm -hmm. time you have. Mm -hmm. So in order, yes, you say, oh, for instance, someone will say, okay, I'm giving an example. Someone will say, okay, uh, EBM sometimes is lucky guy because maybe he applied this job, he got it. But I applied mm -hmm. like 200 jobs to get one. Oh, oh, my God. oh for instance, uh, Let's say uh, someone can say, okay, his YouTube is going up, but mm. Mm. for instance, like June last year, one month, I did uh, 96 videos in one month. So sometimes I sleep late so that I can make mm. videos. I can do, uh, so there are so many things you have to be able to do, but that's why for me, like, if you ask me, will you go back to live in Tanzania, like my full life? Mm. No. But I will go to live in Africa for like two, four, five years. Yes, I can do that. But to live my full life in Africa, because I see my life style, uh, like mm. the internet speed, like the way I do certain things, here allows me to do this kind of things. For instance, right now, for me, I can stay inside the, my room uh, in the house without going outside the door, full mm. two weeks without going out, and I can accomplish everything I want from my house. And I don't need to, uh, I've been, I haven't been outside the house. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, sometimes when I go, I might not do certain things I want, like is have the speed of doing uh, my YouTube, writing books, whatever those kind of things. I can do multiple things at the same time. Still, uh, mm -hmm. nowadays, okay, things are going better, but uh, infrastructure is not that great. But, is that, but for me, in the, if I go to Africa, I want to live in the rural life. 
the quiet, cool life. Not the Dar es Salaam, Nairobi <laughs> complication. I don't want. I don't want traffic. I want to come down, yeah. relax. You chill. You mm. see your cows. Mm. You see your goat. That's the life I like in Africa. Not the one yeah. like you wake up and go to the traffic for five hours, two hours. You say the traffic, you do nothing. What? I'm wasting my two hours. <laughs> So yeah, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Infrastructure is really a, a problem in in our countries. Yeah. So the rural area, when is they are going to do this infrastructure, internet, uh, good electricity, mm. everything they do in the rural area, someone who can decide you to live in the rural area, you do your agriculture, you do your animal mm. keeping, and you live in the rural area, you have very comfortable life, better than someone mm. in urban centers. That's where the Africa will be going in a better way. That's what I hope we'll be able to succeed a lot when a lot of people are moving from town to go to the rural areas that's where we'll be having a very good development